history changes suddenly. <laughs> Linda and I had a friend years ago that to save money, they worked in town, but to save money, they got a trailer and rented a little piece of land. I want to talk about our perspective of things. And the lady moved in the trailer, and she loved it for a few days till she found out that she was living in a very rough neighborhood. And the police were there on a regular basis. And the lady was afraid all the time. She lived in fear. Uh, something bad's going to happen to her and all of that. And she lived there for a couple of months. And one night, there was a sudden change. One night, it was real, real, real foggy. It was real dark. And uh, she made sure she had a knife in every room, a, a sharp knife, to defend herself. Whatever room she's in, she grabbed that knife and kill whoever would come in to bother her. And one night, about midnight, all of a sudden, there was terrible noise in her trailer. Men, she called 911, and she had the police on the phone and said, please don't get off the phone. And she went in her bathroom with no wind. and rape me. And, uh, and she said, it's terrible. Said, I don't know why they don't come through the windows or the doors, but said they're coming through the top of the trailer. And she was telling the police how bad it was, the dispatcher, and the dispatcher got several police departments to respond. I think there was three police departments that responded to the call. And on signal, they all turned their spotlights on and lit that trailer up like it was daylight. Some of them had portable spotlights that they'd set up. And on signal, they turned those spotlights on. And if necessary, they was going to shoot and kill those men. And when the lights all come on through the fog, they could see there was about 50 Canadian geese had landed on top of her trailer. And their web feet was walking all over the top of that trailer. And it wasn't men at all. It, it, it wasn't anybody going to harm her. It was Canadian geese. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say we can see some strange things that's not really true. I talked to somebody here at church, and they said, Preacher, there's somebody here at church that hates my guts. They, they hate me. They can't stand to see me. They hate me. And I said, that's not true. That's your perception. You're seeing things all wrong. So the next service that the people was here, I, I took them into the uh, war room, and I said, so-and-so thinks that you hate them. And I told him you don't hate them, and could somehow, without letting him know, could you let him know you love him? And uh, they sort of stomped their foot a little bit and said, I hate him. I hate him. He, he's perceiving the truth. I hate him. I hate his guts. I hate every place he walks. I hate him. And I thought, we need an altar call. We need an altar call real bad. I, I'd like us to read from the book of Luke, the second chapter, and it is rather lengthy, and I know Christmas is over, and I know my Christmas message wasn't, it was a Christmas message, but it wasn't a Christmas message, 
but uh, I, I ran across this, and, and I would uh, like you to focus in on this with me. And again, I ask that you please don't be doing anything else. I, I know a guy that brings a magazine to church and he reads it, and I know it's easy to read your Bible and, and all that. I want us to focus our attention on, on what we have here. Luke, the second chapter, I want to talk about a sudden change. You, you don't realize how quick your life can change. I was in Israel, and Linda said, Martin, something's wrong at home. And I said, how do you know that? And she says, I don't know. I just know something's wrong. And so we got all kinds of shekels. We got two handfuls of shekels and went to the pay phone and, and started to put them in to call home. And it was going to be a very expensive call. And this guy sitting there said, what are you doing? And Linda said, we're calling home. And he said, uh, you can call home on my computer. And he said, it'll cost you a half a penny a minute. So we called home. And Marty answered the phone. And uh, Linda said, what's wrong, son? And he said, well, there's two things wrong. He said, your Aunt Norma passed away. She'd asked me to do her funeral years ago. And I was in Israel, and no way I could get home. And then he said, there's more bad news. He said, Keith Davis's twin brother passed away of a heart attack. At what age, Keith? Young, 43. Young, to me, that's a kid. Some of you, that's old. Chris with a K, that's old, but... To some of us, that's young. Twin brother died. One phone call. A sudden change. My dad called on Saturday night, 3 o'clock in the morning, and said, Son, your mom has passed away. He said, She's gone. She probably died in the car. Uh, got her to Lexington. There was nothing they could do. He said, son, I don't feel like talking. Could you call your sister and your brothers and let them know that mom's gone? Bang. That, that changed the whole world. Changed the whole world. Suddenly. Just bang. Life's not been the same without their mom, and if your mom's not around, you know what I'm saying. Uh, mom always had food going. She always had coffee going. I like to smell it, but hate the taste of it and, and, and all of that. But let's read about a sudden change. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. You know, I'm ever learning. I love to read and study. I found out something this week I didn't know. If you see here Wednesday night, you, you know it. Swaddling clothes, I've always thought was rags or something, soft rags laying around. Swaddling clothes came from the temple. Uh, and and uh, they, they used them in worshiping God. And, and somehow Mary had that swaddling clothes, and she laid him in the manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Tonight at 6 o'clock, there'll be a lot of people don't have room for Jesus. A lot of people be so busy on their computers and television and football games. And I, I love how God, while the enemy's trying to destroy the church, I love how God has destroyed some of the idols in our sports world. Kentucky has the worst record they've ever had, I think, in basketball. 
uh, God, God's doing something if we would just listen. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Verse 9. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. What's going on here? There's going to be a sudden change that's going to change all of history. Verse 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Woo, we need some joy in the camp, don't we? Which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger, verse 13, and suddenly, and suddenly all of history changes. There was an angel, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now, say now. now. Let us now go. I love people that don't wait. We call Linda, last minute Linda. She, she waits to the last minute to do anything. Let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste. Say with haste. And they found Mary and Joseph and a donkey and the babe lying in the manger. You had to catch Wednesday night to catch that one. Verse 17, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. Let, let me ask you a few questions. I, I love to ask questions. It's a lonely, dark night, just like all shepherds go through. But we find out real quick by the story that these shepherds were near Bethlehem. As a whole, shepherds took their flocks out into the wilderness and into those areas. They led them to green pastures. They led them to still waters. You probably know that. Uh, Psalms 23, and, and, uh, and shepherds were out there. But there is a certain group of sh shepherds called, oh, Mary kept these things in her heart, and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God. Can you return back to the sheep praising God? Uh, I'm not sure those things that they heard and seen. There's a certain kind of shepherd that's called a temple shepherd. Again, Thank God for the computer. We can study and go deeper than, than, than we've ever been able to go. One computer program I paid $3,300 for, and man alive, it's amazing. But there was a certain kind of shepherds that are called temple shepherds. And uh, Mishnah, am, am I saying it right? Can you accept that? Mishnah is a special duty shepherd and they were assigned to a specific temple duty. They kept the sheep that was going to be used in the offerings. 
so they weren't way out in the boonies. They were taking care of the temple that was going to be used as sacrifice. And uh, they lived a little bit different. It, it is known, you're not going to believe this, but my dad was raised in the country with no electricity, no running water, no any of those things. And in the winter, they took a bath once a month. Once a month. That, that's all they, and then it would be what we would call a sponge bath. As the whole shepherds were dirty, they, they, were, they smelled. Uh, uh, but this group of shepherds was a little bit different in that they were closer to town. And usually on a daily basis, they would take sheep into the temple to be used uh, uh, around the church. Uh, and uh, that's important that we know that. But I, I want us to ponder, if your son was going to be born, when, when Marty was born, I bought bubblegum cigars for everybody. I, I couldn't, uh, with a clear conscience, pass out smoking cigars. Besides that, I taught school and I had 30 kids in my class and I couldn't give them a smoking cigar, so I, I gave them all a bubblegum cigar. I, uh, Linda went upstairs to find Marty wherever she found him up there, cabbage patch, I guess, and, and, and she found him up there. And you all don't know how hard it is on a man when a woman has a baby. I put part of a bubblegum cigar in my mouth and I chewed it and chewed it and it lost us. And I put more and I put more. Finally, I had a whole bubblegum uh, cigar in my mouth and I got me another one. And I had a water bubblegum in my mouth so big around it. My jaw was killing me. And I said, boy, this is hard on a man having a baby. Finally, about four o'clock in the morning, I got tired of all that bubble gum and I went and threw it out the door of the hospital and uh, I feel sorry for whoever stepped in that wad. <laughs> uh, they limped the rest of their life, you, you know. Uh, but here, I, I went to school and uh, I uh, hung a big piece of paper in my classroom window and the kids that I had taught previous years come by that window, and I put, it's a boy, six pound and 10 ounces, I, I, I put on that, and I announced to all my students and my friends, I'd give them a bubble gum. Who would you announce, Keith, if you had a baby? Who would you announce it to? Well, my family first. The family? Friends. Who? Yeah. Friends, if he was God, who would you announce the birth of his child? Huh? I know who I would get to make the announcement and tell them all. I'd tell the king. I'd, I'd tell the king. I want you to announce to everybody in the kingdom, a baby's born. And he's the son of God. And I want you to tell everybody. God didn't announce it to the king. You know why he didn't announce it to the king? I do. Because they was going to kill him. As a matter of fact, he killed Linda and I was at the church where at the altar there's a, a glass area. You can look in the altar. And there's hundreds of thousands of babies bodies buried under there and the strange thing is not one of them was a girl nope. you can tell from a skeleton if it's a boy or not they saw because you're not going to announce it to the king because he's going to be jealous of his kingdom and he's going to uh, protect his dynasty <laughs> he's going to protect his dynasty so, no, I, I don't believe I'll tell the king 
about it. I, I know who I'll tell. I know who I'll tell. I'm waiting for you to tell me who you would tell. I'd tell the military generals. I'd announce to them that my son was born and he was going to rule the world. No, nope, you don't do that. They're the ones that killed all their babies. I know what I'd do. I know what I'd do. You know what you'd do? I would announce it to all the pretty Hollywood stars. I, I'd say uh, Marilyn Monroe. Oh, no, that's sort of outdated. Uh, Elvis Presley. No, that's... I, 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 who, who are they? Who's some of the big stars right now? Uh, they, we, yeah. No, you, you wouldn't announce to the movie stars because they're so hung up on themselves that they, they, they don't care if a child is born to us. Hmm. Who would you tell? Who would you tell? Not the king and not the military and not the movie stars. I know who I'd tell. The financial market. Wall Street. That'd be logical. Where all of this money comes floating in they could promote, no, 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 no. Those bankers don't care nothing about the Son of God. Wall Street cares nothing about the Son of God. Many of God's people won't pay their tithe. <laughs> they don't care. Uh, who, who would you tell? Uh, not the rich people. I know who I'd tell. I'd tell the hoo-hoos. I've got some friends that are hoo-hoos. They're real, honest to goodness, hoo-hoos. It says on their forehead, hoo-hoo. I'm somebody big. I'm somebody special. I've got a D-D-D-D-D. I, I, I've got a Ph.D. I've, I've got a medical doctor. I, no, you don't want to tell the hoo-hoos. Well, who would you tell? I'm not going to tell the who-who's. I know who I'd tell. Who's logical to tell the Son of God, Son is born? Who? No. The church. The religious crowd. Who else are you going to tell? Huh? Yeah, the preachers. The preachers will appreciate that God's finally sent his son to be a bridge to build us back. The preachers could care less. You know why? They are so busy arguing over all of the rules. Ten Commandments, 613 rules that you had to follow. You've got to go to church. You've got to this. You've got to that. No. God didn't tell the scri scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He never told them. Uh-uh. God knew. God knew. God knew. I understand that God was absolutely wise when he said, I'm not going to tell the movie stars. I'm not going to tell the religious television preachers. I, I mean... Wouldn't you go to Texas or Florida or to one of those big preachers? In one service, they could announce it to millions. No. God picked lowly shepherds. The point is this. Why did he pick? Why did he do it? Because he's going to touch us lowly people. God's not looking for big shots or movie stars or kings or queens. Although he, he could use them if they'd take their attitude. God's looking for little people in a little place that will tell others. That will tell others. Why would you pick shepherds? Number one, they're team players. 
They don't have to be the star. They'll play with the team. I cried one night. We had played music in Morgantown, West Virginia. I played the bass. The bass is just your solid background of the work. And everybody bragged on the lead guitar player. His name was Jerry Evans. And man, he could make that guitar talk. And I cried all the way home. I got in the back of the van and I cried. Nobody bragged on me. Nobody bragged on me. The Lord was preparing me to be a preacher. <laughs> Nobody bragged on me. And Linda met me at Cumberland Gap, Tennessee. We had a Volkswagen Beetle, and my bass guitar touched either side of the Volkswagen Beetle when we put it in it. And uh, she was waiting for me, and she jumped in the bug, and I jumped in the bug, and we started home, and I was madder and harder. <laughs> just like some of you have acted this week. And, and uh, ooh, and she said, what's wrong? And I said, nobody bragged on me. She said, what? I said, nobody bragged on me. See, I wasn't a team player. Nobody bragged on me. Huh, the nerve of all that. I said, do you know what I'm going to do, Nina? Uh, uh, Linda? You know what I'm going to do? When we pull in the driveway at the house, probably 15 miles, I'm going to get that bass guitar out, and there's a fence post in concrete, and I'm going to shatter that bass guitar into splinters. She never said a word. She just said over there. She knew I was angry. I started shifting the gears down to pull in our driveway, and Linda looked at me. And said, who are you playing for? That woman could have said anything. Really? Who are you playing for? That's the first thing she said. And the second thing she said, you can't bust it. I said, why can't I? She said, you still owe over $1,000 on it. And we're talking about 77 something like that. Well, thank God for smart women. Are you a team player? Can you do some? We've had more fun. Don't know where it come from. Don't, don't know. Don't know, don't know. Maybe we'll never know. But somebody gave Larry a guitar for Christmas with a little note on it. And Larry told me, you know who I think gave it? And I said, who? He said, is this my water or Larry's water? Larry said, I think Keith Hornbeck gave it to me. Keith Hornbeck said, no, I didn't give it to him. He said, I think Glenn gave it to him. So Glenn came in this morning. Everybody jumped on Glenn. Where'd you get that guitar at, Glenn? Glenn said, I don't know anything about it. Now, I don't know if one of the two of those are lying or stretching the truth or exaggerating. I, 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 don't, I don't know. It might have been Josh gave it to him. I, I don't know who gave it to him. But it's been so fun watching everybody think it's somebody else. First person that I heard was Pam. Pam uh, gave it to him, and she knows better than that. I'm not a team player. I, I Give it to me. <laughs> you, you know, it's a black Stratocaster. But, well, they were team players. They worked together out in the field. While one slept, a while the other one. We need team players in this church. Not only that, they understood God doesn't play favorites. That's one of the worst mistakes a church can get into is where they start getting in cliques. C-L-I-Q-U-E. C-L-I-Q-U-E. That's small, exclusive groups. Old people get together in an old people group. Young people get together in a young people group. Everybody gets their own little, mommies get together in their own little clique. 
God doesn't want little cliques in the church. God wants us to all work together, pull together. Let us all pull together, pull together. How happy we'll be. Yeah. God's looking for people that can pull together. And it doesn't matter who gets the credit. But Larry promised me if he ever found out who done it, he's going to let me know. Uh, the shepherds were out in the field alone. While you're alone, God's given a whole bunch of us alone time. Because God speaks most of the time when we're alone. Not where, when we're in a big crowd and we're being real busy. They weren't looking for external things. They, 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 uh, they were just hard, faithful. I told you I heard a song this week on Christian radio. It said, oh, come all ye unfaithful. Yeah. Yeah. And it was an appeal to unfaithful people to get faithful. I know who gets mad at me when I talk that way. It's not the faithful crowd. They were faithful. They were listeners. They could hear a fox out there or a lion or a wolf. Uh, they, they listened. And when the angels spoke, they heard it. They heard it. They heard it. They took immediate action in haste. They got up and they said, you know what? We need to share our story. One of the worst things that the church has fallen into the trap anymore. As a matter of fact, we don't even have them at church anymore. It's testimony service. Why don't we have them? Because the preacher don't like them. No, the preacher loves testimony. Oh, how he loves. You are overcomers by what? Uh, the blood of the Lamb. And by the power of the word of your testimony. No wonder some of you can't ever overcome. How many years has it been since you testified? The shepherds were not ashamed to share the news. And I believe as they found where baby Jesus was, they told everybody, a child's born. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Finally, the Messiah is here. They told. I believe if they told the stars, the stars would have been too busy doing their star work that they wouldn't. Oh, I made some more mad at me. Could you please quit making faces at me? I'm going to start making them back. At, no, you, when I win the lottery, there's going to be a mirror from there to there where you see yourself. You, you know, that's okay. You, you reveal spirits by the moods that you're in. Shut up, preacher, and get over. They were doers. Oh, preachers loved doers. They enjoyed what they was doing. They was filled with joy. They was excited, just like you are. are. I don't have the mirror out there to show you. <laughs> Just like you are, Chris with the K. They were so excited. God trusted the message into their hands. And God's trusted the message of his son into your hands. And how many people will go to hell because you worked with them, but you never mentioned Jesus? Because you, you, they were your neighbors. Yeah, yeah. they accomplished the task. And not only did they do that, they went back to work with joy. Most of us can't get up and go to work with joy anyway. You don't know how bad this jail is. No, I don't. Uh, and I hope I never know. Uh, I'd never know from the outside offices. I, I know from the inside office. The gift of God, of his son, exposed to little nobodies. That message should really reverberate in this place right now. I know some of your minds are way off in Timbuktu. I know that. Just turn around and look at everybody. You can see that. 
given me a chance to do it. God gave his only son. I have two sons. You've heard me say this before. I have two sons. I could not give either one of them for anybody. Jesus lived in heaven. Jesus was standing with God right in the middle of nowhere and the Holy Spirit. God said, let us make. <laughs> and Jesus said, good idea. And they made the world without form or void, and it was all dark. And God said, you know what would be a good idea? Light. He said, let there be light. Poof, there was light. Now let's see you do that. I can do it if Linda's standing by the switches back there. God gave. My mom was taken from me. Mom Lingard was taken from me. Linda Hilton was taken from me. Harry Gerard was taken from me. Dana Jackson was taken from me. Cleo and Willis Sledge was taken from us. Nobody took Jesus. God gave his only son. Tolerate me telling it one more time. If I got a phone call and said, on the corner of 2nd and Central, no, let's go to a road I know, Scottsville Road and uh, Campbell Lane. Well, no, that's a bad example because it's one road that way and it's another road this way. It's Lover's Lane this way and it's Camel Lane this way. Same road. Don't make no sense to me. But let's say Camel Lane and Scottsville Road. At 1.12 today, your son is going to pull his police car in front of Best Buy and a guy's going to come out and shoot and kill your son. You know where I'd be at 1.12? I'd be in front of Best Buy. I'd be watching, and when my son pulled in there, I'd get between him and the shooter. Remember a guy got between President Reagan and what was his name, Hinckley? And shot, and he took the bullet for him. God took the bullet for us. He gave his only son. His only son gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave us the church. Mary gave her body. Mary gave her rep reputation. People whispered about Mary all of her life. Even when Jesus was five years old, they'd say, some people believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but you know and I know he's an illegitimate child. Uh, Mary gave her body and her Thank you, Mary. Joseph gave his pride. You know, he, he should have put her away, but he didn't. Jesus gives us rest. I wish some of you all would learn to rest. Jesus gives us his peace. Jesus gives us, wait just a second. Remember the creation and Adam and Eve? And God gave them the keys of the authority. And they gave the keys to the devil. And when Jesus come out of that grave victorious, and when we see the horse getting ready to come back from heaven, there's something hanging on that horse. The keys. Jesus got the keys back. Yeah. And he gives us the keys. We have the authority. Well, I got to quit. Jesus gives us living water. Jesus gives us not just life, but abundant life, eternal life. And let's close with this. Linda and I, Linda and I was riding a man, M-A-N-N, -N, bus made in Spain, in Israel. 
it's like a greyhound or like a prevost or uh, you know it's it's a big bus there was 33 preachers and some of us had our wives with us and and everything and two shepherds had met in the middle of the road one of them probably had 50 sheep one of them probably had 100 sheep and when the shepherds met in the road and was talking all the sheep got together I'm sure they spread sheep gossip or something like that. They spread something. And, and all those sheeps was together. And I said to Linda, how on earth are they going to separate those sheep? How does he know what's his and how does he know what's his? And as our bus got closer, the shepherd, one shepherd yelled out something. And all of his sheep got behind him and went that way. And the other sheep, their shepherd said something, and they all went. They never had to separate them because sheep knows the shepherd's voice. I think that goes that for a pastor, you, you, you know my voice. You know my voice but I think it goes to the good shepherd. Amen. Good shepherd know the voice of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm asking you, this is our last Sunday being together in the morning. We'll be together tonight. Some of us will. And then Wednesday night falls in this calendar year. What have you done in 2020? I don't know if you remember the false teachers or not. Why to say, <laughs> however, hell's going to break loose, didn't happen. I don't know if you remember in 2019, everybody said, what a wonderful year, 2020 perfect vision, everything's going to be wonderful in 22 and 20, and we're going to take it all. Look. Just look. And everybody's thinking that 21's going to change everything. COVID's going to be gone the 1st of January if you believe some preachers. If you believe the others, all hell broke loose December the 1st how soon we forget these personal prophecies that people make I make no prophecies I say we'll see I will tell you I will tell you what have you given in 2020 later on in the year you'll get a sheet that tells how much money you gave to the church I think God knows how much you made in 2020, and I think God will compare those two numbers, in my opinion, based on the Bible. You've robbed God. The nerve of you telling me I've robbed God? Yes, you have. Where have you robbed God? In your tithes and offerings. I'd rather live on my 90% and God's blessing then live on 100% without his blessing. Do I know his voice? Okay, I'm going to close with a question. What are you giving? What are you teaching? Josh, what have you taught Nate this week? Has he seen your temper any? Praise God. Praise God. I don't know that I can say that. Uh, can I say it, Linda? What, what are you giving? What are you teaching? Are you giving what you want to give? See, that's a neat thing that the church is supposed to do. Judgment begins where? Where? In the house of God. So you need to take your temper and your giving and your words.
fight, fuss, fight. Uh, somebody wanted to fuss with me this morning. And I told Linda, I'm not going to die on this hill. It's not worth dying on this hill. This fuss has come up before. Why on earth do you watch people? The dumbest thing in the world that you could do is to watch other people. Hollywood is not real. Have you ever seen Andy Griffith go to the bathroom? You ever seen Aunt B go to the bathroom? I will guarantee you something they did. You know what Linda gave all of the ones that had a household in our family? Toilet paper. She gave Josh one that says there's 72 rolls in there. She gave the other 48 rolls. She said there's more. There's five in Josh's house. There's more in his house than the other houses. I looked for 72 rolls in there, and all I could count was 18. Now, some of y'all can count better than me. Wait just a second. What have you done in 20? How's your record in 20? The Bema seat of God, B-E-M-A, the judgment seat, you're going to stand and give an account. Every time you've stayed home and the preacher stood looking at the glass door crying, 31 years, seven people on Wednesday night. I'm a great success. Wait a second. There was only eight in the ark. I almost qualify for the ark. What are you giving? What are you going to do? Do you pray and do you read your Bible? A really shouting sermon, isn't it? My closing question is this. Can you do better? Can you do better? Can you? Now, I can pick on Chris with the K. That's how we all remember his name. Larry told me Chris with the K. Looks like Abraham Lincoln, don't he? Can you do better? Could you read your Bible more? Could you pray more? Could you give more? Could you love more? I could also be more patient. Yeah. That, that, that was the lesson. Patience. Yeah. Yeah. Would you bow your heads with me? I'm talking to the cream of the crop of our area. Several counties represented here. I'm talking to the best people in the world. But I need to remind you, God's trusting you. The jokes that you tell, the words that you use, you're fussing with your family. God's trusting you. He's trusting you. And I would like us to make a commitment the last Sunday morning service that we have here. I'd like us to make a commitment if God would help us, we're going to do better this year than we did last year. I don't know about you, but I'm 69 years old. I'm at the end of the show. I don't mean to be harping on you. I just want us to be better. The word I always use is gooder. I want you to be gooder. Someday we're going to stand side by side in front of God. I believe your pastor is going to stand next to you when you stand in front of the beam of seat of God. And God's going to say, what was the priority in your life? 
And if you say God and you're not, don't even look towards me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I don't care about the things at 69. I didn't cry about the size of the gifts that I gave my grandchildren or my children. I gave to them by faith. I do want to say as every head's bowed and every eye closed, the 1st of December, this church sent a check for $2,000 to missions. We sent a check for $2,000, gave, we gave 13 missionaries $150, that's $10 a month. I've asked you if you would give $10 a month. I don't know of a family that could not afford to give $10 a month to missions. I'm thankful that this little church one person, the whole church gave a thousand dollars. One person gave a thousand, matched what the church raised. And you'd be surprised. It's probably not one of our rich members, like we got rich members. Could you, I'm not asking you to make a vow, but could you give ten dollars a month? to missions. Just earmark it on your envelope. Maybe next year we can give more than that. God blesses those that bless Him. Search me, O oh God, right now. Search me and know my heart. Lord, is there anything in to me that's not pleasing to You? Have I not been evaluating my temper and my tongue? and Lord, the way we're going to change the world is on our knees. I don't think the COVID shot is going to cure COVID. I think when God's people pray, COVID will die. And until then... We better be getting a whole bunch of shots. Lord, the issue is trust. Glenn said it in my last line. Trust. Can God trust me? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you smile? You look so much prettier when you smile. You're dismissed. Love you, boy.